this live martial arts class, we're talking about how for the, of the, uh, the really three Japanese style, you've got the bow, longest one, I'm gonna talk about bow and Joe today. Longest, the shorter one, kind of in the middle, comes up to about your armpit, that's the Joe. And then there's a short one, this is actually closer to a Hanbo, but it's gonna be a little bit shorter, kind of like a walking stick. Now we talk about cane this week, we're gonna go into a lot of cane videos and how to defend yourself with a stick. You're gonna get into a lot of things you can do with a walking stick. And when we talk about the Joe today, you're gonna to learn, but today we're talking bow and Joe. We're talking about basic principles of self-defense, how to defend yourself with a stick. In this case, it's a martial arts staff or a walking stick. Could be a quarter staff. All the principles are basically the same. I say principles, not techniques, because techniques will differ depending on what you're doing. With the long martial arts staff, you have a lot more spinning involved. It, depending on the style, you have different techniques. You have downward strikes. You have strikes coming from the back. You have all those things which will differ de depending on the style. If it's Japanese style or if it's Korean or uh, Chinese style, your hands might be here when you're spinning. Your hands might be here on the Japanese as you're striking. So the techniques are not as important as the principles of defending yourself with a stick. So when we talk about self-defense with a stick, whether it's a long bow or this middle size, shorter Joe, this is what we're talking about in this lesson, the principles are gonna be basically the same. Techniques will differ, but don't get caught up in techniques. Techniques can get you killed. Principles will save your life when we talk about self-defense. First principle, it's the same no matter what the weapon is, whether you have a weapon in your hand or you are empty-handed, it's always the same. Whether you carry the same principle, number one is always situational awareness. Paying attention to what's happening around you as it's happening. If you're like this, you're like this on your phone, if you are paying attention to anything other than what's happening, when you walk out of your house, when you get off the bus, when you sit down on the bus, when you get off the plane and you walk into that big open space, Situ situational awareness is always number one. Pay attention to what's happening so that if you, it's a threat and you can see it and you can avoid it, get out of there, that's always best. So pay attention first. Number two is gonna be getting in a better position. And that's where the stick comes into play. If the stick is between me and the threat, I have more options than if my flesh, my blood, my muscles, tendons, joints, bones are between the threat. This is better than nothing. This is still pretty good, but this is far superior for two reasons. One, this doesn't bleed. It doesn't get hurt. It doesn't feel anything. And two, it creates distance, right? It's a force multiplier in that it's going to create when you more impact. It's going to hit a lot harder. It's going to break bones more easily because it's a thick piece of wood. And when you swing this through the air on the techniques I will show you in a minute, you have a lot more options. You also simply have this distance. Now, depending on the length of your staff, standing behind it, pointing your thumb is always gonna be one of the easiest ways to get in that protected position. From here, the staff goes between me and the threat, and then I point my thumb. From here, I can create distance. This is one strike with your bow or your martial arts long staff, could be a Korean jongbong, could be the Chinese gun, doesn't matter, Silambam. Whatever it is, your style of staff doesn't matter. Remember, it's the principle. Number one, situational awareness. Number two, better position the stick between you and the threat. Point your thumb is one technique. That means they have to get past that, and you can push from the backhand through the front hand. The front hand is guiding or directing the strike. From here, create the distance and simply push. Kind of like a pull cue, right? From here, if you think about what your targets are, that's the next part of uh, self-defense. Self-defense principle is what are your targets that you can remove or destroy with your stick? Eyesight, right? Stick it right through their eyes, smash them in the glasses, if they're wearing glasses, bust them in the nose. That affects their ability to breathe temporarily, makes their eyes water, smash them anywhere in the face. It's like a punch in the face. Only all of that force is concentrated on a much smaller space. So you are now generating more force for a smaller spot. You're gonna do a lot more damage when you go right into their face. Between the eyes, right? Smash them right there, but instead of a big punch, think of just one knuckle flying in. It's gonna do a lot more damage. 
uh, the mouth, bust their teeth down their throat, break their lip, make it hard for them to breathe temporarily. Through the throat, permanent destruction, right? Permanently take away their ability to breathe. <clears throat> you hit them a little bit, it's a gag reflex. If you go all the way through and crush it, it's probably, they're probably not going to survive that. For self-defense, we're talking self how to defend with a stick. So from here, great distance, first one is that simple push. Now let me show you with the Joe. And I have two versions of the Joe. Hardware store, you can pick this up today. If you have a hardware store or a general store and they sell a dowel rod, I take this and I sand it off. Get a piece of sandpaper for less than a dollar. You can buy them single too. If you have, if they have sell them in a whole pack, just take one out and ask, can I buy this? They'll say yes. Most uh, better hardware stores, you buy them single anyway. Um, but you sand it down. The uh, dowel rod itself costs you uh, six, seven bucks. And then you sand it down, or you could get like a rake handle, cut it down a little bit so it's that perfect height. The Joe should come up right into about the middle of your armpit, right? Right about where, where it starts. It's about that high. So that when you're holding it on the ground, you have this much length to defend yourself with. Now, these are both a little bit shorter than my ideal Joe, but I didn't let that stop me training. I have, I, have, I have the most beautiful Joe ever made. I had it for 30 years, but it's stuck in Ohio, and I can't seem to get it shipped down to me. From here, uh, but, but I have something to train with. That's my point. Start with what you've got. Anyway, get, get a broomstick if you can. Cut it down, sand off the finish, so the oil from your hand can start getting into that wood to make it more flexible, more pliable, and a lot stronger. It needs to be oiled either with your hands, by your hands with daily practice, or get some mineral oil. Some coconut oil works well. Don't use vegetable oil because it gets rancid and it'll stink, it rots. But if you use uh, co coconut oil, that usually uh, doesn't seem to be affected too much. All right, so anyway, this is one version. I wanted to show you this. It's a little bit shorter, but or I should say, and from here, goes between me and the threat, point my thumb. Pointing your thumb on the front hand puts the stick into your back hand. This is how to defend yourself with a stick. So it goes between me and the threat, point the thumb, and look, that's that same pushing backhand to the front hand, straight through his nose, straight through his teeth, through his throat, through the, into the chest, solar plexus, maybe to the groin, the uh, vicious dog mauling people off the chain right into the face. Then the next, and it's the same thing with this one or the longer one. Say if it's in your back hand, though. What if you say, well, you know, they caught me off guard. I'm walking like this, and now the threat's here. They're too close to do, put it in the other hand and then do that, right? So this is one way. This is a different way. doesn't mean one's better than the other, just different applications. Always remember to learn everything, and then you'll be prepared. Now, this is in the back hand instead of the front hand. So the way you're going to use it differently is you're just going to lift as you lift, the other hand is going to come up. So you ha now have two hands, and you're going to point that at the threat. This should, you can see very easy to strike and push straight in. Yes, it's good to see you. From here, I do remember you. From here, point, push. It's just simply creating distance, hard. This is such a hard strike. When you practice this, if you have something like this, you're going to feel that's a water bag but you're gonna feel how much force you can generate. And you don't have to be ex exceptionally accurate, meaning from the beginning, the very first day, you go to the hardware store, pick up the rod, sand it down a little bit, get, get it moving in your hands. I'm gonna show you that, all these spins, all the things that you can do with the Joe. With the first day you get at home, you're out walking around the neighborhood, you don't feel safe, put your hands up, back up. If it's in the front hand, point the thumb, the back hand, bring it up like this. Both positions are going to give you a lot of options to strike. Now, back to the front hand, we point the thumb and I push. That was the first one. The second one is going to be simply both hands here, not sliding through, but just pushing. You can do a variation of both. You can slide it a little and then push. Slide a little to create more distance, but then with your hands still separated, more because then you're going to bring it in for the third strike which is down this way now see where my hands are they're more at the bottom of the 
staff. And let's go back to the bow because I want you to see how it's just a little different, but really the same technique. Principle is distance. That was the first one. And see how I have more length on both sides? Obviously, because it's a longer staff. The second one was that thrust, a simple thrust from here, thrusting through. And then we said you can put them together, modify it a little bit. So there's a little bit of lengthening or sliding through your hand and creating distance. Now look how much room, how much distance. If I measured that, that's probably about four feet. Four feet between me and the threat. That's far better. If he's got a knife, he's coming at you, or there are multiple attackers, and you've got to respond to two or three or more people very quickly, it's better if you do that, and you reach out and touch them and keep them out there so that you can then go to this guy and then go to this guy, and then that guy's a little closer, and then you create that distance again. You push litter through his throat, push him back, through his midsection, and push him back, keeping that distance. Now, just like with the, uh, the Joe staff, when I go here, I then have this next strike. Let me show you what that looks like. Your hands are in an opposing position. That means the right hand is away, the left hand palm is facing me. From here, my left foot's in front, I strike down at this angle. And think of targeting the, uh, I, I call it operating system, right? It, it, it makes it, for me, it helps me visualize the idea that if I shut down, if they shut me down, if they hit me with that chunk of concrete or a brick or a rock or an iced water bomb, and they smash me in the head and I go under, I'm unconscious, I'm knocked out, and then on the ground, who knows what happens when I fall? Maybe I smash my head on another piece of concrete, they're stomping on me. Horrible situation, right? You don't want that to happen. That's why we're learning how to defend with a stick against a violent attack. So this, between me and you, you're guarding your head but your striking points, thinking about what you can turn off, remove, or eliminate, their ability to breathe temporarily, permanently, their ability to be awake temporarily, right? Smashing right to there. It could be permanently too, that's horrible to think about, but we're talking about self-defense and you staying safe, your right to defend yourself. Not violence, not, uh, well it is violence, it's using violence to defend yourself. But the idea is not just a wanton violence, not just going around hurting people because you're bad. We're talking about self-defense. You're right as a human being and having an option. You're not comfortable going out in certain situations, but now because you have a walking staff or a hiking stick, an everyday walking stick, you now have those options. You create distance either by pushing your thumb at the threat. You have this strike now. You know how to do this strike now. You know how to do this strike. One more before we go back to the back end, because I want to show you that again. From here, you have this back hand. Think of just punching straight in to the face. And what's going to happen is the staff is going to come through this way, and it's going to catch him, or removing the ear, really, with this hard piece of wood and that tip right there, their eyes, their nose, whatever. Maybe it is they've got that knife. Maybe they're grabbing. Maybe they're punching. Maybe they're coming at you with that chunk of concrete and you create some distance. And then this comes from here, just straight across, hard, fast, and you should practice this. Slow it first, create distance, thrust, angular strike, or horizontal strike, just across the back. And then finally from here, what, so that you can practice this, you have one more option, straight down. This backhand, just think of chopping on his head. You're not gonna chop his head, you're going to hit it with his big stick from here straight down for self-defense. So practice that. Get a better position. Create distance. Push. Strike down at that angle. Come straight across. Straight down. Start over. Distance. One, two, three, four. And does it have to be in that combination? Absolutely not. Practice both sides evenly and mix up your combinations. From here... Point the thumb, maybe you start here, and then here's a new one from here, pushing. But that's the same one that we started with when I was in the backhand, right? From here, straight in. Now let's say it is backhand. Lift and point. Push, then you have that same strike. You have that same strike. You have that same strike. They're all, bring it over to this side. You have it all the same. It's basic, basic, basic stuff. 
that you now know how to do with, uh, with a stick, a martial arts stick in this case, the bow, the longer staff. Same is true. This time, let's use our dowel rod that we got at Lowe's. Literally, down the street, Lowe's, I think it was $4.56, some weird number like that. Like, it, was, it was like under five bucks, piece of sandpaper for 28 cents. And then the oil from my hand from spinning all the time, and then a little bit of linseed oil or cottonseed, one of those two. If you do get one of those, try to get the boiled one so that, again, it's, uh, it's gonna absorb better and it's not gonna, it's not gonna go rancid, it's not gonna stink. If you use um, Crisco or something, you're gonna smell it. Probably not, I don't know about Crisco because that stuff's nasty, but um, you like a, like a vegetable oil or, or one of those canola oils or something like that. Don't use, don't use olive oil, that's what I'm saying. Use a, um, an oil you would put on some furniture. So from here, in the front hand, uh, thrust, right? Point the thumb, thrust. Point the thumb, practice. Point the thumb, thrust, add that second, strike. Now, if you want to accelerate that, this is unique to this weapon. You can do it with the bow, but um, the bow's so long, it creates so much force, you're you might even lose your staff, and there's no need to. You don't need it because you have so much force. This isn't as long, it's not as heavy, so it's not hitting as hard as the bow. So the bow superior that way. We're both, they're still sticks though. But if you want to add some power to this strike, this downward angular strike, allow this backhand to push. As you push, that's accelerating. So your backhand is literally pushing and it's sliding through the hand. And then your hands will come together, creating a pivot point like a baseball bat and it's going to slide, it's gonna come all the way through, and it's gonna increase that speed dramatically, right? So much harder and faster. What you give up when you bring your hands together is control, okay? So when you bring it down here, you can stop it because your hands are separated. When you put a pivot point, when you create a pivot point, it's gonna be much harder to stop it. But if you need that for, for self-defense, you need that forceful strike, allow your hands to come together. So from here, Create distance, push, strike. Same thing is true coming through the backhand. Now you can, you can push it here. You can use just that little bit to strike in your fist. Or, that's what's so beautiful about this smaller uh, staff, is it's, it's designed to slide through your hands and go in different positions so easily because it's simply not as long, right? So you have all of these different things you can do with this that are unique and different. And, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do Joe only uh, videos. If you wanna learn how to fight with this smaller staff or you can stick to the bow. They both are super effective. We talk about how to defend yourself with a stick. And we're talking about um, Joe and bow. They both have their advantages. That thing has weight, uh, strength of the strike, how hard it hits. And it has um, distance. Create more distance between you and the threat. Keep them way back, right? This has speed. It's gonna. It's much faster. Versatility, and then just so many more um, fighting specific. And this is. I think this is the more. This is the superior fighting weapon. Uh, and, and it looks like more like a walking stick. It's more like a hiking stick you might take on the trail. So you can take it more places and not look so obvious. You walk down the street with quarter staff or a bow. You're gonna look pretty obvious. Um, but who cares, right? If you don't care, I don't care. If somebody else has an issue with you carrying a stick because they think you look goofy or silly or whatever, that's their issue, not yours. It's not mine, right? Um, but we're talking about, like, if you want to go more places, the number one uh, thing that you can use, uh, stick for self-defense, is always going to be the walking cane with the crook or the hook on the end. And that's because it's considered a medical device and the Americans with Disabilities Act in this country allows you to take it anywhere. No one is allowed to question your uh, need to have it. In other words, you can take it where you can take it on the plane, train, bus. And we're going to do a video on that probably later today on how to defend yourself with a walking cane. But this is Joe and Bo, which represent long staff, middle size staff. This particular one comes from Lowe's Hardware. You can get it at Home Depot. Or, like I said, if you have an old wooden broomstick and the broom's all eaten up, cut it off, and there's your Joe, right? Learn how to use this to defend yourself. Learn how to fight with a stick if you need to. 
or if you just want to, you want to learn something really cool, this is it. All right, so we're here, create distance. There's the thrust. There's the second version of the thrust. This is kind of the pull cue. This one is just pushing like a spearing motion. You have that downward angle strike, and then watch what I do as I slide and create that distance and bring that big piece of wood right across the jaw, right into the neck, into that nerve that's gonna put them on, their, uh, put them on the ground or right into the temple that's gonna knock them out. Or maybe it's the shoulder, break that femur or that arm. Maybe it's the, the hand, they're reaching in with a punch and they're trying to grab or they're trying to stab and you smash it through. And what I did was after I did this downward strike, I simply slid this hand to the end and this hand to the end and they're going to change positions. That's it, right? So I have this to this. You can practice that. So I strike here. Actually, uh, I, I was wrong. I just misspoke. From on, on this one, on this strike I'm showing you right now, I didn't change positions. I'm simply uh, changing where my hand is, hand placement. I slide this down, slide this down, bring that across your face with a big punch like that. So from here, down, and then across. Across like that. From here, straight down the middle. All the same strikes I did with the longer staff, but there are small adjustments. And adjustments that I find really fascinating and cool, and once you learn how to do them too, you're going to see that this is way superior. This is the best, one of the most interesting weapons that you'll ever find to work with. And it just looks like a stick at first until you start to realize, you know, that there are so many things that you can do with it, right? And you're bringing it through, changing hand position, hand position, and it's really fun. All right. Anyway, last one we talked about was what if it's in the back hand, and that's just coming from here straight up. If it's in the front hand, point your thumb. If it's in the back hand, just lift. Now from here, I can strike, right? What if they're trying to punch me in the face? and I lift from here to here, I can block them. And their hand will literally go like this. They're coming straight in and I come up this way. Or maybe they're swinging something down on top of my head and I have to respond quickly. From here, just pushing straight up. Then, when their hand's up in the air and their ribs are exposed, I can smash that rib, I can go through the middle, I can bring it down on top, I can change positions, you take their knee out, slicing straight down that way. So many things you can do with this stick. So, um, yes and no. Uh, by horizontal strike, you mean this one, right? It depends on where I'm hitting you. Think about, go back to uh, the idea of uh, self-defense principles. Principle one, situational awareness. Principles over techniques. This is a technique or more what we're talking about that's a technique that horizontal strike but number two better position think about the threat because the third question in self-defense principles is what are your targets what are my targets if you're attacking me maybe it's six guys maybe it's three people maybe it's um, a pack of wild or vicious dogs maybe it's one dog maybe it's one person does he have a knife is he on the gun did they already knock me down and I'm on the ground and I'm on the back scrambling to get up? Your targets are going to change depending on the situation you're in. That's the point of principles. So if you only ever practice striking like this, striking, strike, and it always is coming to the shoulder and it's always this high, but the first one's going to be obvious. It's a dog and he's down there. You just missed him. You might have to come there, which, look, that's going to put the hand in a different position. Maybe you're on your back and you got knocked, or knocked down, you're trying to sit up. And I practice, by the way, I practice these, you should practice these too. If, if you're serious about self defense at all, do everything from a chair, see how it's different. Do everything from a park bench, see how it's different. Because a chair might just have the back and you have a lot of mobility still, right? like rowing in a uh, kayak. But now there's a bench here. You can't do some of those moves, but you can do other moves. And then slide down on your back like you just got knocked down. Lie down on your back. See what you can do from the back. See what works up here. You still have a lot of options, but you're going to have to change how you do that. Then sit up halfway. 
See what happens here. How can you use that to get back up on your feet? Then go on your belly. Put, push the, run, throw the staff three feet out of your reach. And then from there, imagine that your ears are ringing because someone detonated an explosive device. All the glass is shattered. I'm, and I'm totally serious here. If you're serious about self-defense, everything's broken around you. Your ears are ringing because they've been popped. You've got blood coming out of your nose. Your eyes are blurry because there's soot and dust and pieces of glass in your eyes. I mean, you can't simulate that, but imagine. And your staff is over there. And that guy's coming in, or several of them. And you want to have this instead of nothing. How do you get over there? You belly crawl, you roll over there, whatever it is. And then you get it. And then go through each one. Not in some weird, geeky, nerdy way, but just thinking about it. Because this is what professionals do. You're a professional. And you start carrying the stick. You're a professional martial artist, professional self-defense expert. You're, you are your own uh, personal security detail. And if you have a family, you're, it's even more important that you learn how to first protect yourself and learn how to protect the others, right? Because maybe uh, help is coming, but maybe they're 10 minutes away, 30 minutes away. Maybe they got hit too. Maybe it's a tsunami um, and they're three days away or a hurricane or um, some weird other event that we haven't seen yet. And you're saying, yeah, but that's never gonna happen. But you're wearing a mask. And we're all wearing masks. And we're walking around with masks and everybody's looking around thinking, and we've lost 40% of the jobs or whatever it is, 30%. And <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And in the third world countries, the deaths are piling up. If you look at what's happening like in Ecuador and uh, Central and South America, some of the horror stories that's happening in India in Africa and some of the places, and I'm not trying to scare anybody, and it's not about that. It's about either prepare or panic. And so try to imagine scenarios. I'm talking about how to defend yourself with a stick. You've got a shorter version and a longer version. Learn the basics first. Point your thumb, thrust, strikes, come through. My, uh, I don't know if I answered that question about does it have to be up here on your shoulder? No, it doesn't. If your target's the face, it will. If it's higher, it's going to be a little lower. If it's on the ground, it's going to be a little higher, right? Do not, uh, I think maybe if you're asking me, do you do this? Don't do this. That requires a different hand position. Now, is this wrong? No, it's just different. These are also valid strikes, blocking, right? Striking, just a different way to do it. And then all kinds of fancy stuff you can do. When we're talking about self-defense, I'm not talking fancy anything. I'm talking about as fast as immediate, direct, and explosive. That's what you want. Here, 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 right? Everything you can imagine in a very direct way, as fast as you can. We don't need to be going into, you know, all of the other cool things that you can do, and you can spin, and you can do all of these things, and you can bring it through here, and you can finger roll it, and you can do all that. And yes, that's all cool and fun, but we're talking about how do you defend yourself with a stick, Talk about basic principles. Stick between you and them. Situational awareness, stick between you and them. Better position. Either point the thumb, or if it's the backhand, lift. Um, blocking, right? Point the thumb, blocking. Same thing. Blocking here, blocking here. Blocking straight down. Maybe that dog is leaping. You got to block. Maybe the guy comes in with a knife thrust. Strike, strike, boom, boom. And then through. Learn the very basics big, strong, fast, hard movements, all the little intricate details, all the fancy, pretty stuff, the esoteric or aesthetic, right? Esoteric is kind of like a rare. Aesthetic is like pretty, pretty to look at, fun, right? That stuff comes later once you master the basics of self-defense. So grab the staff, long, short, doesn't matter what it is, and picture it, visualize, and then make yourself sweat because you practice the scenario, full speed, full power, full intensity. Because that's the next uh, principle. After you figure out targets, then you're talking about full, 100% commitment on every single strike trying to end the self-defense fight. Trying to, with, with this strike, with this I don't want to go 15 minutes fighting you with my staff or even 30 seconds. If I can do it with one strike, that's what I want. Especially being a Marine. If you were, any of you are Marines out there, you understand that value of knowing how to shoot. That's how they train the Marine Corps. 
more than anybody else at the basic level, learn how to shoot. Because they're not going to waste bullets. And you never put it on semi-automatic, right? Any Marines out there? Ba -ba 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 -ba. And you see those movies? Ba -ba 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 -ba. And you're like, nah, not if you're a Marine. One shot, one kill, baby. And for self-defense. But, but learn that. Take, adopt that principle. You don't want to be in there, boom, you know, spinning, coming through, doing all that stuff, and take the, looking like Jackie Chan or whatever, and take the chance. Oh, wait a minute, this is the new movie, uh, Karate Kid. Some people keep telling me about the Bo staff and Karate Kid. So, but that's not, that's not what I want for you. What I want for you is a big stick, distance, targets, and then full commitment on every single strike. Try to end the fight as soon as you can. Get it over with. Get out of there. Stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.